There have been four churches on this site since the church was planted in 1820, and I'm going to show them to you. We have them represented in small windows in the lobbies. So first, this is the first church. This was built in 1822, two years after John West arrived, and it was a Red River frame building, uh, stood on the banks of the river, as you can see. Um, unfortunately, in 1826, there was a massive flood. Now, the indigenous people of this part of the world have a history, an oral history, that goes back 10,000 years with absolutely no record of the flood, of the magnitude of the flood of 1826. This little church was severely, of course, destroyed and ended up probably in the delta of Lake Winnipeg. There's a great deal of Anglican and Red River settlement detritus in the delta of Lake Winnipeg. So they waited a while, went back to worshiping in the Hudson's Bay warehouse or people's homes, and then they built a second church. This is the second church that was built on this site and if you've been to St. Andrews on the Red, you will notice a slight similarity in the two buildings. This was built by the same stonemason who built uh, St. Andrews on the Red. His name was Duncan McRae. This church was built in 1832. Um, it says on the window that it was the first St. John's Cathedral. That's not entirely true. It was the first church used as a cathedral, which would make it a pro-cathedral. Uh, we didn't have a cathedral, you see, until a bishop came. So this one was uh, damaged by the Great Flood of 1850. Again, a flood of enormous magnitude, which so weakened the mortar in the church that eventually they had to rebuild. This is the third St. John's. This one was built in 1862. Now, this was actually the first cathedral because it was purpose-built as a cathedral. Now, you will notice there's a lovely tower on this church. Unfortunately, the tower fell down, so the church itself ended up looking like God's summer house. But the people worshipped in here um, until 1912, and in 1912, the walls were so weak that the people were afraid that they were again going to collapse, so they moved to the corner of church and main into the church hall and worshiped there until the time that this building was erected. This is the present building, the one in which we're standing. In fact, we're standing right in that tower. This was built in 1926. It says it's the third cathedral. It's actually the second cathedral, purpose built as a cathedral. And the movers and shakers on this one were Archbishop Samuel Matheson and Colin Inkster, whom I'll introduce you to just a bit later. These are items from our cathedral archives. Uh, we have an archivist um, who is part of the cathedral congregation. Um, the, you'll notice that there is a, a picture of the uh, first cathedral after the tower fell off. Um, doesn't it look like God's summer cottage to you? Um, little recollections of various vestry meetings. The picture in this case, uh, the fellow up in the top left-hand corner, that's John West, who is the founder of the parish. And below him is a fellow named Chief Pegwis, who was also a member of the St. John's Congregation. 